Ah, the roar of the crowd, the ludicrous outfits, the roving bands of vagabonds looking for glory, bloodshed, and ultimately, to score. But I'm not talking about a night out in Hull City Centre. I am, of course, talking about Blood Bowl. Hello, my name is Connor, and welcome back to the Hobby Heap. In my almost never-ending quest to tackle my pile of shame, I decided to sort of speed paint my Lizard Man Blood Bowl team. We've got skinks. We've got chameleon skinks. We've got saurus blockers. And we have this absolutely beautiful Croxagore, who I'm very excited to get finished. The first thing on our to-do list is to tackle this gap in the middle of the base. Old Blood Bowl models used to have a tab you could slot into these gaps, but these models don't. So for a quick fix, I'm going to cut up some matchsticks and just cram these in there. They fit perfectly and are a great first step. Next, I'm going to cover the bases in Vallejo Earth Texture. I've left the small hole at the front of the bases clear as this is where we can slot the Blood Bowl ball to keep track of who's holding the ball during the games. Once this is done, I base coat everything using Vallejo Black Primer and give everything a light zenithal spray using a Ministratum Grey Air Paint from Citadel. This can very easily be done using a spray can, but for speed, I'm going to be using my airbrush. Now, speed painting can be done in many ways, but I thought I'd jump on the bandwagon and attempt the new craze hitting the mini painting scene, Slap Chop. This is where you dry brush the models using greys and whites, and then use a semi-translucent paint like Citadel Contrast Paints or Army Painter Speed Paints. The idea is the grey and the white dry brushes act as your highlights. Here, I've used Citadel's Dawnstone and White Scar, but any light grey and white acrylic paint will do just fine. It's a very subtle transition, but you can see the difference between the minis before and after being dry brushed. Once this is all done, I come in with my colours. I'm using Citadel Contrast paints mostly here. The first one is Frost Heart, which I use for the skin on the Skinks, the Saurus Blockers, and my Croxagore. The thing with the Slap Chop method is you need to be careful not to get paint on any of the wrong bits, so brush control is important here. I'm not super worried about getting the paint on any of the armour panels or the jewellery, as this is going to get a regular acrylic paint anyway, which will cover the contrast.
My chameleon skinks are going to get a coat of gut ripper flesh for their green skin. After this, I come in with Flesh Terrors Red for all the back scales on my models. I'm looking to follow the box art to some degree here, so I'm going for this dark red instead of a dark blue seen on regular Age of Sigmar Seraphon models. Next up, Imperial Fist Contrast Paint. This is used on all the feathered headdresses. The stripe on the shorts. The tabard loincloth things, as well as the eyes. After this, we use Black Legion on all the shorts, as well as the gloves that the Skinks and a couple of the Saurus blockers are wearing. Then, it's Volupus Pink for any tongues and open mouths. And we quickly paint this ball the Chameleon Skink is holding using Gilliman Flesh. We then move on to using Gehenna's Gold for possibly the most painstaking part of this paint scheme. These guys have so much gold on them. We paint the rest of the headdresses. We paint the shoulder pads. We paint the mouth guards, the front plates, the back plates, the bangles, the bracelets, the horn toppers, the tail tips. Most of the things that are still unpainted will probably get painted with gold here. Now, whilst I still had the Crocsco out, I used Karandras Green to paint his scaly shoulder pad and some other small scales on his loincloth and opposing shoulder pad. Ethematic Blue was used on his weapon to make it look like Jade or a different exotic stone. All of the gold areas got a wash using Reichlin Flesh Shade to dull down the gold a little and give it some depth. The next step is to use Wraith Bone on all the claws, horns and bone on all the models. The most important step here is if you're recording with your phone to make sure it inexplicably starts recording in a different format that your video editing software hates and therefore the quality goes all weird and washes up any semblance of colour. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> A 
Any parts we painted using Wraithbone get covered in Skeleton Horde contrast paint to give them a cool, worn look. Very carefully painting any pupils you feel brave enough to tackle using Black Legion. Then to add some cool gore to our big boy and definitely not to hide any mistakes our contrast paint couldn't cover, I use Blood for the Blood God technical paint from Citadel. Like most of my bases, the mud texture gets a coating of watered down rhinoxide. This is only so if any of the static grass we're about to apply falls off in the future, you know, it just looks like brown mud underneath. Once our phone we're using to record decides to record in the regular format, we can cover the bases in PVA glue and just sprinkle some generic green static grass on the bases. I would love to tell you where this static grass is from, but I found it in a box full of Warhammer fantasy models I had from when I was a kid, so I have absolutely no idea where it's from. I also don't know if static grass has a use by date. It seems okay, so we're just going to go ahead and keep using it. As you're watching me sprinkle static grass on these bases in record speed, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who's watched my videos so far, and to everyone who's subscribed. I've had an incredibly busy couple of months with Christmas and January, which is why there's been a bit of a break between videos. But I've got so many ideas lined up for 2023, and I'd love if you guys stuck around with me for everything I've got planned. Videos will definitely be more frequent this year, and my pile of shame is going to shrink in size for definite. And, as we sprinkle the last of the grass on, let's get ready for those glamour shots.
I'm so happy with how these guys came out. I think the slap chop method definitely has some merit, and I think I'm going to explore this method a bit more in the future, especially if I want to get a kill team or war cry team painted up in one go. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what I do and you want to come with me on my never ending journey to tackle my pile of shame. If you want to support the channel and help me keep the lights on, I've got a ko fi link in the description. Thanks again, team, and I'll see you very soon on the Hobby Heap.